watching us from around the world. Uh, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study slash preaching <laughs> uh, service and uh, right here in, in Glasgow, Kentucky. I want to make an announcement. This coming Sunday, we're going to have our Family and Friends Day, also our Thanksgiving meal this coming Sunday. Our service starts at 1030, and then as soon as service is over, we're going to have all kinds of turkey dressing, ham, uh, all the good things, desserts, anything that will make you fat that's not good for you, it'll be here uh, this coming Sunday. We're going to have all kinds of food, so uh, come on back and be with us this coming Sunday. I wanted to make an announcement. Uh, United Faith Independent Church uh, located in Cave City, Kentucky, Pastor's Brother Alan Harper. They're having a youth revival, and that starts this coming Friday night. And it'll be going Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night. Brother Mike Shrum uh, from down in the Scottsville area will be coming and preaching. And that starts at 7 o'clock on Friday night, Saturday night. And then Sunday night, it starts at 5 o'clock on Sunday night. We're going to dismiss our service here on Sunday night. We're going over there with them and to be in service with them. And I think they're going to have uh, maybe a meal or something afterwards uh, after service that night. So it'll be five. So there won't be any live streaming Sunday night. We will be live streaming, Lord willing, Sunday morning. So come out and be with us in that revival. And uh, I'm expecting to have a great time in the Lord right here at the beginning of the winter seasons. Good time to have revival. Amen. You need a revival right before Christmas to get ready for Christmas and one right afterwards to get over it. Uh, uh, usually because <laughs> sometimes it uh, causes a lot of things. Amen. A lot of pressures and things of that nature and people get lazy sometimes and overeats and gets droggy and so on through Christmas. All right. In uh, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, I told someone I thought we was in 2 Timothy or chapter 2. We're in chapter 4. We moved on a little faster uh, last Sunday night than what I remembered us moving. But we are ready for verse 13, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. In uh, chapter 4, we learned a lot of things. Number one, Paul was telling Timothy that in the last times there's going to be uh, some uh, false prophets that's going to come, and uh, they're going to depart from the faith, and they're going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and we most certainly have seen that. We've seen just about everything being taught except the old-time truth, amen, uh, and there's not uh, too many churches around, still some, but not too many that are preaching and teaching the truth, and verse uh, 2 uh, went on, said to be speaking lies and, hyp and hypocrisy, verse 3 went on, said they'd be permitting to forbidding to marry and commanding people to abstain from meats. We learned about that and how in verse 4, every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. So it don't matter if it's pork or beef or uh, groundhog or skunk or whatever it is. I don't think I want a skunk, but if you will bless it, it's all right with the Lord. Amen. And Paul was talking about in the last days, they'd be teaching things to abstain from meats and things of that nature. And uh, anyway, went on um, down uh, into that uh, scripture in verse 7 and said to refuse profane and old wives' fables. Amen. We talked about some of the old wives' fables and things that you hear that's not scripture. It is nothing but tradition and things that's been passed on. Some of it is superstitious things. Amen. It's not biblical at all. And those things uh, have popped up down through the years. Verse 8, bodily exercise uh, doesn't profit uh, anything but it's godliness that is profitable. Amen. And I brought out the statement. There's an old country song. It says, when you work your fingers to the bone, what do you get? You get bony fingers. Amen. So working yourself to death does not accomplish anything. When all of life is over, uh, the only thing you're going to take with you and me is what we've given away and what we've received from Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to amount to anything. All these other things that we have, uh, they may be somebody fight over them. Uh, and, and you know what? I'm going to go through what little I got because I don't want my kids to be hindered over something that they would lust after. 
Amen. Financial things. Amen. They ain't got a whole lot to worry about anyhow, but anyhow, but anyhow, I don't want them to be concerned about those things. What I want to leave them to remember me by is my faith I have in Jesus Christ and the hope that I have in him. Amen. And I want to give them the warning. Get prepared to meet God and stay prepared. Amen. Went on and uh, down a little bit further in the scripture, uh, and he said, "For the, therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, uh, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe." Verse eleven: These things command and teach. And verse twelve said, "Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity." And we went over those things. Just just before that we dismissed on a Sunday night. Those things are very important. The Word of God's not being taught in the churches. There's mostly an evangelistic message uh, going out in most of the churches. They teach you how to get saved. They teach you how to rededicate your life. Some of them teach us how to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Many of them don't even do that anymore. Amen. But there's not very many that has teaching about the fundamentals of how to live, how to behave ourselves, how to raise our children, how to, uh, to get along with one another, how husbands and wives should treat one another, and things of that nature. Those things has been left off, amen. Uh, and you can see that the churches have been crippled, uh, amen, not wanting to follow authority. Paul was trying to tell Timothy, let no man despise thy youth. And there's a lot of people today, they just don't like to follow authority of any type, and they want to be the head. They want God to call them to preach in March and in May. They want to pastor a church. And they don't want to have any training. Amen. Uh, and, and, and they don't want to listen uh, to people that's been in the way a little while. I had to butt heads with somebody in Africa today. Um, I done it in a nice way, but anyway, he got the wrong spirit about him. And I let him know it too. And he was so far out that he even argued with me. And I thought, boy, it's hard to teach somebody something when, uh, you know, they're, they're arguing with you when they're saying, I'm not doing it. It's kind of like saying, I'm not robbing the bank. Well, you got your hand in the bag, amen, and a gun in front of the cashier. I'm not robbing the bank. I don't rob banks. Well, why have you got your hand in the bag and a gun on the cashier? That's the way that he was. Amen. Sometimes we can fool ourselves, tell ourselves whatever they want to. But if we've got a broken heart, a contrite spirit, if we are meek, if we're humble, then the truth will affect our hearts. Amen. It will touch our lives. It will cause us to repent and cause us to change. Amen. But there's many, uh, you know, that's just not like that. And I told one of the pastors over there today. I said, we see some hypocrisy in America. I'm accustomed to that, but I can sure see there's a lot of it in your area. Amen. He said, yes, many pastors in our area need to get saved. Now, that's bad. That's bad. And I just had the thought come to my mind, I know a few in our area, it'd be good if they got saved. And I'm not meaning that to be critical. I'm just plain telling you the truth. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, then you don't have the Spirit of Christ. Anybody can jump up and down, hoot and holler, and make a noise. Amen. That don't mean that the Spirit of Christ, we need the Word. We need to live the Word. We need to be an example, amen, to others. Amen. And then we need to have a solid uh, foundation under our feet. Amen. Uh, it's a terrible thing for people to be in church for 60 years and still be a baby in Christ. We need to grow. We need to learn. We need to have a solid foundation. Amen. Our faith needs to be in Christ Jesus. Amen. So he told him, uh, now don't let anybody despise your youth. And when, when we finished up uh, uh, the other night, Sunday night, this is what I was telling the people just before that we stopped. Sometimes there's people that are young that will have the anointing of God. Don't let anybody despise your Continue on. If they won't accept you because you're young, uh, don't let that get you down. Uh, they need to accept you because of the anointing that's upon you, not because of the age that you got. And I know that we need to respect our elders. Amen. And, and we need to admonish them. We need to treat
fathers. I understand that. That's right in the word. Amen. But uh, if you're a young minister, don't let anybody despise your youth. Be well studied. Be well prepared. Amen. Use wisdom and then listen to the older ones. Amen. I said that was what I was saying also when we closed out on um, um, Sunday night. Listen, when I was a boy growing up, I, I was around old people more than I was people my own age. Today, it's benefited me a lot. I think the Lord purposed that, especially for me. I needed that. I needed that to be nurtured. I needed to be taught by some of the older ones. I needed to hear that wisdom. Amen. And see if I'd been flooded with a lot of other young people my age to went out and played with, I'd have missed on a lot of stuff. And I would not have had, see, I was having training and didn't even realize I was being trained as a child by listening to some of the older ones. Amen. And, and how that they loved one another and uh, the, the, the comfort that they would give each other and the love that they had and the excitement when somebody would come to see you. When company would pull up in the front yard, the dogs would go to barking, the guineas would go to hollering, <laughs> amen, uh, the rooster would go to crowing, all kinds of noises, uh, amen, uh, and we'd go to the door, and there'd be one of the neighbors, uh, and I'd see my mom and dad or my grandparents just grin from ear to ear. When you live out in the middle of nowhere, man, you done had Christmas in July when a neighbor comes, amen. And then the older ones say, around, amen, and they would talk. I would hear the things that they were saying. I took those things in. I hung on every word that they said. I can remember those words, amen, all these years later. It was such a help to me. We need the word of God for what we see, what we read, and what we hear, but we also need to see it demonstrated, amen, through older ones, amen, that are the pillars of the church, amen. I'm not talking about a bunch of people that's in and out. I'm not talking about people that cusses one day, amen, goes to church the next. I'm talking about people, amen, that lives right. That's an example, amen, you can watch them as a child, amen. I wasn't used to being around people, amen, that were hypocrites. My grandparents were good Christian people. My mom and dad were good Christian people. They didn't have cussing. They didn't have drinking. They didn't hit each other. They didn't throw things at one another. They didn't act like that kind of stuff. I wasn't around any I can't. Amen. I was around people all the time talking about what's right, what's not right, and the Word of God. I got a good foundation before I ever got saved. Amen. Because of what I saw. Amen. How I seen them treat each other. Never one time did I ever see my dad and my mom get into it and scream and holler. I seen them disagree. Mom would shut up and go over and sit down and her lip would stick out. Reminds me of my wife. Amen. Wouldn't say anything. That lip would stick out a little bit. That would be it. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? She kept her mouth shut, uh, stayed in her place where she ought to. Amen. Listen, and dad didn't hit her. He didn't call her names. He didn't scream and holler at her like she was a dog either. He loved my mother. And my mother loved him. She'd have walked off the end of the building for him. That's how much she loved him because of how he treated her. Amen. Because they loved each other. We need that. Uh, thank God for the older ones. Uh, amen. Amen, that lived right in front of us and taught us right. Uh, amen, aren't you glad that you had those? Uh, amen, to mentor you. Amen, when you were growing up, thank God for that. Amen, it's a blessing to us. Uh, and now then today, if you didn't have that, it's your duty to be that for the ones uh, in your family that's younger for you. You need to be that example. Uh, I need to be that example. Uh, amen, you need to be the example of someone that's always praying over every meal, that's always talking about how good that the Lord is to you and what God has done for us. We need to always be holding up, amen, what's right, shining that light of righteousness before them, amen, and condemning the things that sin, sinful and is wrong, amen, so that the younger ones, amen, will know. I've got a big duty. I'm, I'm glad I've got grandkids. I've got six of them. I've got a big duty. I'm always loving on them but I'm also leading in prayer over the food and talking to them about the Lord and singing little gospel songs. And I sing little folk songs along with them too. Amen. Having to clean things, you know, all about the cat got his tail caught in a, a sewing machine and when he hit the gate, he's moving on. 
but it, it's, it's, the, it's the values in life, amen, when we have fun. We need to always let them know there's a chipper side of life. There's something to live for. There's happiness, amen. My, my grandkids probably thinks Pa is a clown because I'm carrying on something, laughing and a carrying on all the time. Life is too short to go around with in a mully grubs with our lip sticking out, always griping and complaining and nothing don't never suit us. I believe if we've got the honey on the inside, the honey's going to get out where everybody want to come and get a bite of it. Amen. I want to teach my, my grandkids, amen, to laugh and to enjoy life. Amen. Don't get entangled with the worldly things. You know, I'm not sure that there's a lot of kids don't turn to drugs and alcohol, amen, because they've had such misery and such pressure on them. Amen. They're looking for a high. You know what? I'm going to give them a little bit of a high just hanging around me. <laughs> amen. I want to do that. That's part of my calling in life. I hope you'll do the same thing. Amen. Make them look forward to coming and seeing you. Like, I'm going to go over to Pa's house and see Mammy because I've always got food to eat and Pa carrying on something silly. That's what I want them to, to do. I want them to think, I can't wait to go over there because their house always smells like food and Pa's are giving me some kind of attention. I can't wait to get over there. That's what I want to leave with them. Amen. My grandparents always loved me. They always paid me attention. Amen. I, 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 I could tell you story after story after story. Amen. Where they cheered me up and they showed me love and they showed me affection. I would have been a complete different person had I not had that. We need that in our homes today. We need that being taught, amen, in our churches. Our people needs to be demonstrating, amen, the love of God and that there's joy and there's happiness. I want to tell you something, folks. Our kids today are is under more pressure than we ever realized them being under. Amen. Under stress, they've got so much that they have to do. They're trying to shove so much stuff uh, in on them that they're making them go to school even longer than we did when we was kids. We used to get out all summer instead of three or four weeks. Amen. Now then, they, they have them go longer so they can shove so much stuff down their throat that they don't need, but they put pressure on them. It's pressure, pressure. You have to be the best. You have to be wonderful. We have to win the ball game. You got to be the prettiest princess. You got to be, why can't you just be you? Why can't you say I'll be ugly until I shed my feathers? Amen. Why can't you say it'll be all right? I'll reach my goal in my time. God don't make no junk, and I'm going to be happy being the ugly duck now, until God makes me the beautiful swan that he's going to turn me into. Amen. In his time. Amen. Take one day at a time and be happy with life. Amen. But the children today are pushed so hard to be better than perfect in everything that they're under stress. They're biting their fingernails. Amen. They're under so much stress. We need to be relieving that stress. We need to be hugging them and loving them, spending time with them. Amen, doing everything we can with them to show them a good time. And every one of them, amen, will take things back and out of the situation. We took two of our grandchildren over to Kentucky Down Under this year. Never had been there. I've been by it I don't know how many times all these years. And we've had some of our church peoples went different times down through the years. And we decided to load up and take off. We went. So I ran in one of them golf carts because Jenny can't walk. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, one of my grandkids, they wouldn't pet the animals because they're scared of all of them. But the other one really enjoyed it. But the only thing that one of them got out of it was he rode in a green golf cart. So everything we done that day was good, but the golf cart was the climax of the day. Amen. So everybody takes something out of it, but he'll never forget sitting beside a paw riding in that green golf cart. 
and I let him get my lap and drive a little bit. Part of the time, he'll never forget it as long as he lives. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? They need those things like that, and they need to hear us quote scripture. Amen. Around the, the supper table and go over things. We need to be that example. Amen. In front of others. So don't neglect our youth. Let's have wisdom. Amen. And let's be so godly. If you're young in Christ, amen, the people will see that you may not have the wisdom that somebody that's been in this for 30-something years has got, but you still got the anointing and the power of God and the knowledge of the Word is still on you. Amen. This a young man that I talked to today was so disrespectful and uh, rebellious and he was blinded to it. A lot of the world is blinded to it. If you don't know any better and you pick up with what everybody's doing that's around you, then you're going to think that I'm normal and all them others don't know anything and uh, you know, but what I tried to tell him, I've learned this in 37 years of ministry. What you're doing is wrong. I'm trying to help you. And he come back and said, you may have been in this 37 years, a lot longer than I have, but I know what I know. You know, I know more than you do. 37 years don't mean nothing. I forgot more than you'll ever know. I was educated at two years old. I, I mean, I'm brilliant. That kind of attitude is not going to make it in ministry. He's not going to work under me. I can tell you that right now until he gets saved, until he gets that haughty spirit out of him. Amen? Yes, I'll pull some tail feathers out. I sure did. I'll pull more out if I need to. I'm straightforward. I want to show love, but we need to understand, uh, amen, we've got to go by authority, amen. We have to be in the chain of command, and we have to be willing to learn, uh, amen, and before anybody can ever lead, you got to first be a follower, amen. I followed my older pastors, amen. I had two of them, amen. When they went visiting, I went with them, <laughs> amen. Whatever they done, I, I done what they done. I always respected them. I always called them Brother Richmond or Brother Wheeler, amen, uh, and, and, and so on. But anyway, what I'm saying is we, we need to learn those things, uh, amen, and if we got a, a meek spirit, uh, we'll learn those things. Uh, if we don't, uh, amen, then we're just going to mess up, uh, amen, more than we're going to do good. We've got to have wisdom. We have to do things, uh, amen, according to the order. And here's the thing I want to always bring out. I've heard different ones say, well, the Scripture contradicts itself. Let me tell you something. There's not one thing in this Bible that contradicts itself. Not one thing. Amen. If there's something you don't understand, it's because you haven't understood the meaning yet. Amen. Well, Brother Jimmy, there's things in the Old Testament that contradicts in the New Testament. Not if you'll read it all, they don't. Amen. There's some things that's been reproved. Amen. There's a difference. Amen. If you'll get all of it. Amen. And I'd hate to have the, uh, the, the idealism, amen, that the Bible was, I heard this person one time say, well, the Bible was written, but it really wasn't meant for us to understand it. What? How in the world, uh, amen, to, could we think that God was going to write his word uh, and I'm just going to give them a book for them to get confused? I'm just, I just give them something to do until they can vent TV. No, that's not what the Bible is all about. Amen. The Word of God is our instruction book. It's our uh, uh, manual, amen, for us to go by, Right? Amen, so we have to go by that. Amen, and it's there for us to learn. Amen, and every precept, everything has a reason. Amen, and we have to study. That's why we need to study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we need all of the word. So uh, we need to be studied, and those that are young in the Lord, they need to study, amen, so that it won't be mocked. Amen. Amen. All right, he said, uh, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Now, when he said, 
uh, here, until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. There was one of the older ministers that, um, that I was trying to remember his name, uh, that I read part of his autobiography. And in that, he said that if he had to live his ministry, and this is one of them that, that reached hundreds of thousands of people for the Lord. He said, in the first three years of my ministry, I wish I'd have studied the first two and then preached the third one. Amen. And I want to share that, amen, with all the ministers that may be watching by live streaming. We need all of the word that we can get. We need to be prepared. If we've got the word in us, then the word's going to come out of us. But the word can't come out until we first put it in. Amen. I see people get up and they just, hey man, my wife, praise God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. What did they say? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they said. Nothing made any sense. Nothing was building up and added to anything. Nobody's life was ever changed. So God doesn't want that. He doesn't want a bunch of confusion, and he don't want people to have the attitude that the Bible is there just for you to look at, but uh, God knows you ain't going to ever understand it. He wants us to understand every bit of it. That's why it takes studying and praying. Amen. And the more that is released and revealed unto us, the better that we can serve the Lord, right? Amen. Verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. So when we study, then what we've profited from the Lord can be seen by other people. Amen. Different ones will say, wow, I wish I had that anointing, that man or that woman's God. Someone else will say, wow, I wish I had the, uh, the knowledge that that person has in the word of God. It's that it's right before you. And somebody else will say, wow, man, I wish God would give me a congregation like that or give me a ministry like that or give me a church like that. Amen? See, and it's it's seen before all how God has lifted us up when we have given the Lord all of our heart. Amen? And everything that's within us, it will touch people's lives and people will know who's dedicated and who's not dedicated. Amen? And people will know who's studied and who's not studied. It'll come out. It don't take very long either. Especially if you read the Word of God for yourself. Amen? Verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt behave thyself and them that hear thee. <laughs> them that hears you will behave themselves also. And you'll know how to behave yourself in the house of God. I've seen somebody today put a thing on Facebook, and it was really good. He said when he was a child growing up, people had manners. I thought, wow, been a long time since I've seen that. Amen. And they, they treated the old people with respect. They called people, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. They would open doors for people. Now, uh, now then, uh, you go most of the places, a kid will jerk a door open, run between you and a door and just about knock you down and let the door come back and knock you down if they don't knock you down because they just, they're not taught respect. They're not taught manners. They're not taught to love one another like they need to. And back, and what this person was putting, it was Brother David McNeely, who it was, a real good post he put on Facebook. He said that, you know, back in them days uh, that uh, the teachers had paddles, and if you had a child that was misbehaving in the neighborhood, one of the neighbors would whoop them and send them home without fear of being sued, without somebody going off on somebody, amen, for punishing your child, amen, and taking up for the child. Now then, the child's a victim. He's got a problem. He didn't mean to burn your house down. You just have to overlook it. Amen. If you send them to school and they dirt, set the toilet paper on fire, in the boys' restroom or the women's restroom while well, that child's got a problem. Years ago, they called it peach tree tea. Now then, they keep that away, and they got ADHD. Amen. I know there is really ADHD, but a whole lot of the ADHD would be prevented if they had some peach tree tea. Amen. Absolutely. We need less drugs, more hugs, 
and more switches. <laughs> Amen. And make the world a whole lot better off. I can tell you that right now. Amen. We don't need to be the children's friend. We need to be their parents, don't we? Amen. All right, let's get in chapter 5. We'll go as far as we can here in chapter number 5. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. I went over that a little bit just a few minutes ago. And the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity, honor widows that are widows indeed. That's a widow indeed is one, amen, that's above 60 years of age, amen, and one that washes the saints' feet. That's what the Bible says, amen. So she's showing humility, but to entreat the, the elders, the pastors, the bishops, in the church, the deacons, the leaders of the church, and treat them as fathers. Now, the, the ministers that's under me in Africa, they call me dad. The ones in Pakistan call me papa. But I'm, I'm the father image. Amen. And the, the ones in Africa I talk to every day, thank you, dad. That's why I appreciate you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, for your wisdom. I will remember that. I'm glad to be under your ministry. They always send me things like that. Makes me feel good. Uh, and I'm not going to show you any of those things because I'm not building myself up. But what I'm saying is most of them, now you're going to get one every now and then like they are over here. Amen. They've got that roguish spirit in them. You can't tell them anything. They know more than anybody else. Amen. There was a pastor friend of mine yesterday saying, right now, I've got six pastors, six preachers in my church. I said, Lord, help you, brother. I'll try to remember to pray for you. He said, well, they can be a help to me. I said, they can, and they can be the biggest uh, trouble that you've got. He said, yeah, sometimes they get that Absalom spirit in them. I said, yep, uh-huh. They decide that if they was pastor here, they'd do it this a different way. I of another way, and it would work a whole lot better <laughs> than this way. That kind of spirit cannot work in the church. It cannot work, amen. They're not following leadership. You have to, and I done said this already once before. I'm going to say it again. To be a good leader, you got to first be a good follower before you can ever be a leader, amen. And you have to be meek, lowly in spirit, and you have to be teachable. There's some people that are not teachable. Now, when somebody's not teachable, that doesn't mean they're dumb. Don't nobody think that for a minute. No, it has nothing to do with intelligence. You can be the most, you can have the highest IQ of anybody in your area and be unteachable. Some people can't be taught anything. They've got to learn for themselves. They think they know it. They don't trust anybody. They won't listen to anybody. Amen. They always want to walk in front of the teacher. Let me help you <laughs> with this. You can't walk in front of the teacher and learn. You've got to sit back, amen, and listen and watch, amen. But uh, anyhow, uh, we need to not rebuke an elder, but we need to entreat them as a father and the younger men as brethren. Don't treat everybody as if they're your enemy or your rival, right, and I've been trying to get this point across. They're, they're really having a hard time with this in Kenya. I've been talking to some of them over there. They're having a hard time. They don't trust each other. And it's almost like, you know, I've got to be ahead of this, and there's several of them are jealous. They don't want to talk to the one I put in charge. They want to come talk to me. And I said, I've got somebody in charge over that. You need to listen to him. They don't want to listen to him. He's younger than they are, and they want to talk right straight to me. I'm having a problem with that. And I've, I'm telling them, the ones that don't want to listen to how I've got this set up, you just move on, and we'll go on without you. We'll love you just as much and hope you'll come worship with us when we get there next year. But if you're not going to listen and you're not going to uh, respect authority, and if you're not going to uh, appreciate the one I've got set up doing this, then you just need to back out and move back and let us carry on. Amen? Because, uh, you know, uh, this, this one preacher today was saying, it looks like that everything is personalized. 
I said, that's the way I want it. I want it to be personalized. I want the one I've got in charge there to know who he's working with. I want him to have a personal relationship with that person, know all there is to know about that person, and to trust that person. He's doing it the way I want it done. That's the, and if you do it any other way, it will fail. You can't put people in charge. He was wanting me just to open it up and just let him just pick anybody out of us. I said, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That's not what they, we're not doing that. No, 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 no. I heard a brother uh, down in uh, uh, Tennessee, I was trying to think of his name, um, the, the pastor's uh, Abba's house down there, Ron, Pastor Ron Phillips. I heard him say several years ago he had a problem in his church with this. He was saying uh, there's some of the people that's got upset in my congregation, and he said, I've lost some people. And the reason why they got upset, they said the only ones you ever put in charge of things are your friends. He said, surely you don't think I'd put my enemies in charge. I hope you get that. You got to have somebody working under you that you know, somebody that you know you can trust. Amen. If you just practice on the community, uh, unfortunately, I've been guilty of doing a little of that. Amen. I looked at their smile, heard their testimony, instead of watching them for a while. See, sometimes their quills don't stick out. Amen. And the next thing you know, they'll tell you I'm a groundhog, and you'll find out they're porcupine. <laughs> Amen. Them, them quills is going to go to hurt when they poke through this shirt, poke through the pants. Amen. They're going to cut you. Amen. A groundhog, he might be soft and cuddly. Amen. That porcupine is going to cut you up. Amen. So you better have somebody in charge. Amen. Under you and somebody that's like-minded, that's in full agreement, and you can send them to do something, and you know they're going to walk, talk, and act just like you're going to. Before you send them, they're hard to find. They're hard to find, really hard to find. And I'm going to explain to you why they're so hard to find because we got so many churches. If you've only got 10% of the people that goes to church in 43,000 uh, people, that would be 4,300. When you got 4,100 churches, and you only got 43, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And a new one popping up every day. Amen. Somebody's starting another one in a basement every day or two. A new one to popping up somewhere. Amen. And the ones that we got sitting, uh, they're half empty or they only got a third of the seats tucked up. Amen. And, and the church is in worse shape than I've ever seen it. All denominations. It's in the Baptist. It's in the Pentecostal. It's in all of them. Nobody wants to set an authority. Everybody wants to be the head. Everybody wants to be in charge. Everybody wants to be boss. Everybody's got an idea how to do it. I want to do it my way. So I'm going to go out and start me one. Amen. And, and that type of stuff. That's the reason why we got the problem. So those in that 43,000 that will attend church, then you've only got a small percentage of those that will go to church that are stable. And then you only got a percentage of those that's within that percentage that's got gifts and talents. Then you only got a percentage in that percentage out of the first percentage that we took out that are willing to, uh, to be leaders and are willing to follow. So that's the reason why you've got such a hard time, uh, because you got them dispersed. Amen. Uh, see, if you know, it's kind of like the old joke that they said about the the man on the island. He'd been there for twenty years, and they finally sent a boat to rescue him, or not a boat, but a helicopter to rescue him. And as they were lifting off, uh, he was leaving the island. He was said, "I'm so glad that you come and got me." He said, "I've been here twenty years by myself." He said, there's three buildings. I'm sure you built all three of them. He said, I did. He said, what's, what's that building over there? He said, that's my house. He said, what's this building right there? He said, that's my church. He said, what's that building over there? He said, oh, that was my first church. Couldn't even get along with himself, so he went and built another one. He's the only one on the island. See, so that's, that's about where we're at today. Amen. In um, American culture, 
Amen? Uh, and, you know, things, it's hard to get the workers that you need. And every church is suffering. Every last one of them. Uh, amen. Uh, so don't rebuke an elder. Wow. Well, Brother Jimmy, what if that elder's doing wrong? Then you need to, the Bible tells us to have a two or three witnesses. Amen? And then before the leaders of the church, let them investigate, not rebuke. Amen? It's too many people gets in their own spirit. The preacher preaches on something. They think he's getting personal with them, which if they were in the spirit in the first place, uh, they would be humble. And if he was getting personal with them, they'd go hu hug him and thank him instead of getting mad at him. It's the flesh that makes us mad when we're guilty. None of us likes to be embarrassed. None of us. None of us likes to be straightened out. There's not a one of us that does. That's just human nature. It goes against our feelings. It hurts our pride. It belittles us. That's why they used to stand you in the corner at school to humiliate you. That's the reason why if taking you out in the hall, whooping you didn't help, they had you spread your legs and hang on to the to desk and let the whole room set their pencils down and everybody look to help you. Amen? Sooner or later to get to you. I had a guy that I went to school with. He was going to be Mr. Tough. So the teacher done took him out in the hall and whooped him already a time or two in previous days past. And he ain't nothing going to tell him. Ain't nobody's changing me. I'm tough. And your paddling ain't going to bother me. <laughs> so the teacher said, well, I'll just put you in front of the class. So he put him in front of the class and made him hold on to that desk spread his legs, hold on just like that. He said, I'm going to give you three licks. Wham, wham, wham. He said, I go back and sit down. He said, <laughs> that wasn't nothing. He said, oh, whoa, whoa, hold a minute. Come back up here then. If you want more, I'll give you some more. He said, get back in that same position. Wham, wham, wham. He said, now go back and sit down. He started back and he went to smiling strutting. He said, oh, wait a minute. If you still got a strut, young man, come back up here. He said, put your hands on that desk. He said, I'm getting that strut out of you. Wham, wham, wham. I mean, almost lift him off the floor. That time, he still had a smirky look. When he went back and sat down, he looked up to the teacher and went, he said, come on back up here. He said, I'm taking the whole class if I have to. I'm getting this out of you. That's what he told all of us. He said, if the rest of you gets this uh, and you act like this, I'm giving you some of this. That time, wham! 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 And every time he hit him, he rocked forward like that. That time he was shaking all over, tears coming down the side of his face. He went back and sat down. He said, I believe you've had enough now. Put his paddle back in the drawer. That breaks up that haughty, smart aleck, arrogant, rebellious spirit, and we've got it in the churches. Amen. I'm going to take here and stop just a minute. Amen, pastor, preacher, brother. Hallelujah. I thought I'd help you all out a little bit. Amen. That's the way that it is. And we get that cocky spirit out of us. We can serve the Lord. Amen. When we're broken, amen, we've got a meek spirit. Amen. And we learn, amen, to follow others. Amen. And to be nice. <laughs> amen. And not rebuke the elder, but entreat him as a father. You wouldn't see me back talk my daddy. I've got to see all these teeth. I can prove I still got them. If I'd have back talked him, he'd have knocked me down. Amen. Got me in the next week. That's exactly right. Amen. Wouldn't have put up with that kind of stuff. I never did back talk him. Mm. Oh, not even when he was 80-something year old in the nursing home, I wouldn't back talk him. And I never did need to. But, you know, if you got respect for your parents. But I was taught that. Amen. My grandparents never spanked me the first time on either side of the family. Not one time. One of my granddads Give me a talking one day, and I cried all evening because his words hurt me. See if you love them. 
and you're taught respect, you don't have to beat them half to death. Amen. They'll love you and respect you if they think that you're displeased with them. It'll break your heart. You'll cry your eyes out. You understand what I'm saying? And they knew that all they'd have to do was tell Daddy they wouldn't ever have to spank me. Amen. But they didn't have to tell Daddy either. Listen, we've lost our respect. Discipline is a thing of the past. Today, they rebuke an elder. I can tell you, pastors right now has went through living torment through members. Now, folks, years ago, now I ain't going to take it today. I'm getting too old for it. I ain't going to take a bunch of stuff. I tell them what you need to do is hit the road. Take your attitude and get out of here. Not putting up with that mess. But years ago, when I was young uh, and, and pastoring, they drug me into the Sunday school room, chewed me up one side and down the other. It was wrong. It was one meeting that we had. I even got on to the deacons. That's when I was starting getting stronger. I said, this man's out of order. And, brother, you talk to me like that one more time. You're going to wish that you hadn't. And I said, if you deacons had any brass, you wouldn't let him talk to me that way. I looked him right in the face, too. That's when I was coming out of that, getting my boldness. Amen. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you didn't mess with me. Amen. Don't put up that mess. I'm not intimidated. Amen. Listen, right's right and wrong's wrong. Amen. Now, many won't like you for that. But see, that's exactly the reason why the church is in the mess that they are because the preacher is scared to death to say anything to anybody. They can't nobody correct anybody else's children. They have to let them tear the walls down. They have to paint the church every two years because kids put their feet on the walls of a lot of churches and parents won't say anything. Mm -hmm. That's where America's become. Hoo-wee. Well, I didn't know it was going to turn out this way tonight, but anyway, uh, we ain't got to the widows just honoring them, and we'll honor them starting out next time. And I'm going <laughs> to say to the live streaming folks tonight, share this on your timeline if you're not scared to, and <laughs> share this with other people so that they'll hear the truth. It's time President Trump's got a theme, let's make America great again. My theme is let's get to church great again. Amen. Let's get the Holy Ghost back in him. Let's get authority back where he belongs. Amen. And let's get the knowledge, amen, back into the people and let them learn what the Word of God says. This is good for the church to learn this. But there's many they will never learn it because they'll never go to a church that will teach this verse by verse. Amen. Precept. Uh, thank you for watching this, watching by live streaming. God bless you and have a great night tonight. And don't forget, uh, come to our um, big uh, uh, Family Friends Day and Thanksgiving celebration this coming Sunday. Starts at 1030. Don't forget the Youth Revival, revival at UFI Church, Cave City, Kentucky. Brother Mike Shrum will be preaching and uh, Pastor's Brother Alan Harper. That's Friday night, Saturday night, 7 o'clock.